All right, so today we're putting everything together. We're going to take the different information we've learned on 4.4, and we're going to graph rationals using all this information. Okay, so we're following this setup. Here is our first rational. We are trying to factor it first. So on top, it's x minus 1. That's going to stay the same. x squared minus 4, can we factor that? Yep, x plus 2, x minus 2. Cool, we factored. Part of factoring, and I don't know if it's necessarily a separate step, but once you've factored, you're going to decide, can I simplify that at all? Is there a hole? Is there a hole on this graph? No. Okay, there's nothing that's on top and bottom that's going to work. So there aren't any holes. So on number four, it asks you, find the vertical asymptotes. There's no holes. Okay, there's no holes. We can answer that question right now just on the factoring step. Step three is find the X and Y intercepts. X intercepts, and we struggled with this a little bit last period. How do I find an X intercept? Yes, we're going to make the Y equal to zero. We're going to figure out when this is equal to zero. That's all we did last chapter. We found the roots. We found the X intercepts, all of that. So I'm going to do this up here just real quick. If I set that thing equal to zero, okay, I'm trying to find the x-intercepts. What do I actually care to be equal to zero? The top or the bottom? The top. Because what's the bottom equal to zero going to tell me? That'll tell me undefined. That'll tell me vertical asymptotes. I want the top equal to zero. Because if I set this equal to zero, the way I would get rid of the x squared minus 4 is I would multiply by x squared minus 4. Well, guess what? It goes away. I don't care about it anyways. And so really, when I find x-intercepts, all I am doing is I am taking the numerator and setting it equal to zero. And so for this one right here, I have an x-intercept at x is equal to one. Eventually, our goal is to graph this thing. So once I find information like that, let's put it on my graph. I have an x-intercept at one. I'm going to make sure I mark that over here because I'm trying to graph this whole thing. That's my x-intercept. Next thing I'm going to do is find a y-intercept. What do I do to find a y-intercept? Plug in zero, because I want to know when x is zero, because when x is zero, I'm crossing the y-axis. So I'm plugging in zero for x. So it's zero minus one, zero squared minus four. I get negative one over negative four. So in other words, y equals one fourth. That is my y-intercept. So again, on my graph, I'm going to go to where y is one-fourth, so some yucky dot right in there or so. I'm going to put a little dot. That's my y-intercept. Number four says find vertical asymptotes or holes. Where already said there's no holes. Show me with your fingers where the vertical asymptote is going to be. We take the bottom. We set it equal to zero. So I'm going to have vertical asymptotes at x is equal to plus or minus 2. Take the denominator, set it equal to 0, and solve. Plus or minus 2. So I'm going to draw those in. So I'm going to my graph, and I'm going to draw a vertical line at negative 2. It's dashed because it's not actually a part of my graph. It's just a boundary line, negative 2 and positive 2. Cool. Those are my lines. So step four is complete. Step five, find the horizontal or oblique asymptotes. Show me with your fingers. Where is my horizontal or oblique asymptote going to be on this graph? Show me with your fingers. This is what we did all day yesterday. Um, let's do this. Show me the fingers. What's the degree of the numerator? The degree of the numerator is one. What's the degree of the denominator? Two. Where's it bigger? On bottom, if the bottom is bigger, if as I approach infinity, the bottom is going to keep growing and growing and growing. So what's my horizontal asymptote going to be? Horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. If the bottom is bigger in my degrees, then it is horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line right here at y equals zero. And for this first question, number six doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but I'm going to show it to you. Okay. Where do you cross the horizontal or oblique asymptote? We can cross horizontals and obliques. And to be able to figure that out, yeah, Kendall's already knows what the answer is here. Okay. This one's pretty obvious, but let's show you what we're going to do. To figure out where you cross a horizontal or oblique asymptote, you take your rational 
and you set it equal to the horizontal or oblique asymptote. Where is my horizontal or oblique asymptote going to be? Zero. I want to solve for x. I don't like that x squared minus 4 on bottom, so how would I get rid of it? I would multiply both sides by x squared minus 4. Over here on the left side, oh yeah, that's going to cancel. On the right side, oh yeah, that's going to cancel. I just get x minus 1 equals 0. Or in other words, x equals 1. Well, yeah, we already said that right here. Okay, it's just proving what we already said. So it's kind of pointless at that point. But most of the time, it'll give us good information. But we're crossing this horizontal asymptote at 1. We already said that. It's our x-intercept. Same question here. Everybody good with that information? Now we're going to graph it. If you wanted to get crazy, you could then plug in numbers. You could plug in 0 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5. But nobody's got time for that. Okay, that's why you have a graphing calculator. Let's break our graphing calculators up. So we're going to Y1. We're going to type this thing in, okay? Uh, I would strongly suggest you typing this in as a fraction. So remember how to do that. If you hit alpha and then F1, the first choice there is N over D. It's going to let you type that in as a fraction. Okay, so alpha F1, N over D. I also found this one the other day just on accident. I didn't mean to, but I hit alpha and then the button right next to alpha, the little link button alpha and then that one right there it does the fraction for you as well it's just a really quick two button process i found it on accident okay so we're typing that thing in exactly as it looks so on our paper it says x minus one on top and on bottom it says x squared minus four if you are not typing it in as a fraction you have to put the whole numerator in parentheses and the whole denominator in parentheses or it's going to be incorrect okay but make sure we typed it in once we typed it in then I always go to the zoom button to make sure my zoom is correct. For the pictures we're looking at today, we want to look at the standard zoom, a 10 by 10 window. So we're going to go down to number six for zoom standard. Okay, zoom standard is what we want to look at. And that's going to give us the basic picture of our graph. Okay, think about the graph that you have on your paper right now. You've got two vertical asymptotes at plus or minus two. Oh yeah, for sure that's happening here. I have a horizontal asymptote at zero. Oh, yeah, it's happening here. All of those things should be the same. Okay, so now we're going to sketch this picture. It is very much a sketch. Okay, so as I look at that thing, before this first asymptote, my graph is getting close but not touching and then dropping off somewhere in there. So I'm drawing that line in between. In between my two vertical asymptotes, so in between 2 and negative 2, what shape is happening in the middle of my graph? It looks like a cubic graph. So that's what we're going to draw. It's a cubic graph. And we have some specific points that we need to touch. I know I'm going through one-fourth on my y-axis. And I know I'm going through one on my x-axis. So I'm going to draw that cubic shape in between there. There's that one. And then the last section was up here to the right. We're going to draw that up here <coughs> to match our picture. Questions with it, where any of that came from. Something I want you to point out, I want to point out to you. Notice that as we draw this shape, okay, as we drew this thing in, as it ends down here before the vertical asymptote, as we go into the next section, it jumps back to the top. And then it goes down and it ends down here. And then the, after the next vertical asymptote, it jumps to the top. Okay. That is going to happen a majority of the time, like 90% of the time. There is one case in particular where that's not going to happen, and I'll show you that more tomorrow, but I just want to point it out. Questions there? Not too bad. It's not really anything new. It's just a matter of putting it together. Let's look at the next one. We got x cubed plus 1 over 2x squared plus 2x. Take a second real quick and factor that. So as we look at this thing, we have a cubic on top. If you're good at cubic factoring cubics, go for it. It's not a skill that I'm good at or that I want to be good at. Because you don't need it. Okay. And so on top, I've got x cubed plus 1. On bottom, I'm factoring that thing. How'd you factor that thing on bottom here, Max? Um, x, and x and then in parentheses, x plus 2. Good. x plus 2. 
Is there anything right now that's visible that we could cancel out? No, no same thing on top and bottom, so I'm good there. Okay, next thing I'm doing is X-intercepts. Find your X-intercepts and your Y-intercepts real, real quick with your neighbor. See what you can do. What'd you do here, uh, Megan, to find X-intercepts? Good. Set the top equal to zero. So X cubed plus one equals zero. Where were your X-intercepts? X equals negative one. So on her graph right here, is, oh, not just kidding. But we do that as an X intercept. X equals negative one. Good. We got that spot. Then we're doing Y intercepts. Jack, how'd you find Y intercepts? You plug in zero for X. Good. So zero cubed plus one over zero squared plus zero two times zero. So where do you think the Y intercept is going to be? What do I get here when I simplify that? I get undefined. So where do you think your Y intercept is going to be? None. There isn't a y-intercept because it's undefined. Why is that true? Let's look at number four. If we're finding vertical asymptotes, show me with your fingers where your vertical asymptote is going to be on this graph. Your vertical asymptotes, you set the bottom equal to zero. Okay, we're setting x equal to zero and x plus two equal to zero. Set the denominator equal to zero. So vertical asymptote at x is equal to zero and x is equal to negative two. And so those two ideas go together here. If I have a vertical asymptote at zero, I'm not going to have a y-intercept because I cannot touch or cross a, a vertical asymptote. So I'm not touching the y-axis because there's a vertical asymptote right there. Okay, and then I got another one here at negative two. That's what's going to split up my graph. Number five says find the horizontal or oblique asymptote. Show me the fingers. What's the degree of the top? On top, it's three. Show me your fingers. What's the degree on bottom? Two. So what type of asymptote am I going to have? Oblique. Can I do synthetic division? No, because it's X squared on bottom. You have to do long division. Take a second with your neighbor and do long division. Go. Here we go. We are doing long division. So on the outside, it's X squared plus 2X. On the inside, it's X cubed, 0X squared, 0X, and then a plus 1. So as I work through this thing, Haley, what do I need to multiply x squared by to get x cubed? x. So she's going to multiply by an x here because x times x squared is going to get her x cubed. And then x times 2x is going to get you 2x squared. Haley, what do you need to do next? Change the signs. So we're going to subtract. We're changing the signs. This cancels. This gets me negative 2x squared. And then I got a plus 1 over here. Then you really just need to do one more step. Kate, what do I need to multiply x squared by to get negative 2x squared? Negative 2. And she can then be done. She doesn't have to do anything else. You don't need to multiply it down. You don't need to find a remainder. None of it else matters because my oblique asymptote is at y equals x minus 2. Okay, oblique asymptote at y equals x minus 2. So if I were to do this, I then would graph that oblique asymptote. It's a slanted line. I'm down here at negative 2. That's my y-intercept. My slope is one, so I'm going up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. There is my line. That is my oblique asymptote. My graph is going to bend to that line. Questions on how I found that? Last step is where do you cross the horizontal or oblique asymptote? So again, to figure out where you cross those lines, you take... Whatever your rational is, do not write big here because it's going to take a little bit of space. You take whatever your rational is, and I set it equal to my horizontal or oblique asymptote. So I'm setting it equal to x minus 2. And then it looks ugly. It looks like it's going to be super rough. It's not that bad. You just got to do what we normally would do. I don't like solving fractions. So what am I going to do next? Multiply by the denominator. Multiply by x squared plus 2x on both sides. I don't like this, so I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to multiply both sides. That's going to cancel. I'm left with x cubed plus 1 equals. On the right side, I need to FOIL. So I'm going to multiply this out. x times x is x cubed plus 2x squared minus 2x squared minus 4x
We go to there. Simplify. What can I simplify? Good. Those two things go away. Let's move the x cubed to the same side. So minus x cubed, minus x cubed. Oh, that's going to cancel. 1 equals negative 4x. Divide by negative 4. Divide by negative 4. X equals negative 1 fourth. What that is telling me is where I'm going to cross my oblique asymptote. So we could plug that back in to find the y value, but we already graphed it. Okay, all I'm going to do is go on my oblique asymptote and go to about where x is negative 1 fourth. I'm going to put a dot right there because I'm going to go through that point right there as well. Questions on that one? Let's graph it. See what's happening here. So we go to y equals. We clear that out. We get our fraction bar. And we're going to type it in. On top, we got x cubed plus 1. On bottom, it's x. What do we have? x squared plus 2x. x squared plus 2x. Type it in. We're going to hit zoom 6 again. We're going to just hit the graph button since we already changed our window. There is my picture. It should very much make sense as to what we've already drawn. Okay, it's just filling in the bones of what we got. So down here, I'm getting close to those two asymptote lines. I'm getting close but not crossing them. I'm not crossing the horizontal asymptote there because, or I'm sorry, the oblique asymptote because we found out exactly where we cross it. It's not there. So we're getting close but not touching. Okay, on this section, okay, in between the two verticals, again, I've got kind of that cubic shape. It makes it look like the graph stops. It does not. My calculator is just not very good. Okay, Desmos would give you a better picture. That's why I like it more. But here I'm going to go through those two dots that I have drawn, and I'm going to get close to that line but not touch it. And then in this last section, I can see kind of that curve right here. Again, it looks like it stops. It doesn't. My calculator is just not great. It doesn't like being that close to the line. I'm getting close but not touching. There's my graph. Questions on that one? Okay, let's try one more. Flip to the back side. See what you can do on that last one there on the top. Graph. We factored the top, so hopefully you can factor that thing if you can't. Use some bar, bar on payback. I get x minus 2 on top and, on, and 2x minus 1. On bottom when I factor, I get x plus 2 and x minus 2. Is there anything I can simplify here? What can I simplify? x minus 2, so this and that are going to cancel. If it cancels, what does that tell me? There's a hole at, and I'm going to go ahead and go 2, comma the other number. How can I figure out the y value of that hole? Plug it into what's left over. I'm left over with 2x minus 1 over x plus 2. And so if I were to plug in 2 here, on top I'd get 3, on bottom I'd get 4. We'll finish that one up tomorrow, and we'll go from there. The homework's not due until Thursday, or Friday, sorry. For people at home, I'm just going to finish this problem. That way I don't have to do it later. So we found the hole. We're going to find the x-intercepts. To find the x-intercepts, we're taking the top and setting it equal to 0. So 2x minus 1 equals 0. x is 1 half. To find the y-intercepts, um, we plug in 0. So if I plugged in 0 here, it would be 2 times 0 minus 1, and 0 plus 2. I get negative one half. So I get positive one half here. I get negative one half there. I already found my hole at two comma three fourths. So I'm gonna go to two three fourths and draw an open circle right there to show that my graph's gonna go through that. My vertical asymptotes at wherever this other one is. So vertical asymptote at x equals negative two. Horizontal or oblique. Well, this is my rational when I simplified it. Since it's to degree 1 and degree 1, we're looking at leading coefficients. It's going to be 2. That's an easy one. Horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. So, again, we got the same degree, so we're looking at leading coefficients. So, horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. I got my vertical asymptote right here at negative 2. Last thing I need to do is decide if I cross the horizontal asymptote or not. And so, to do that, again... We're taking our rational, in this case the simplified version, and we're setting it equal 
to our horizontal asymptote. So we're setting it equal to 2. We're multiplying both sides by x plus 2. This is going to cancel. 2x minus 1 equals 2x plus 4. And if you were to solve this, the 2x and the 2x, if I were to subtract it over, it's going to get me 0 equals 3. 0 is not equal to 3. That is not true. And so that tells me I do not cross the horizontal or oblique asymptote. That is not something that happens here. Okay. Then we would type that into our calculator. Just trust me here. My picture is going to look like that on this side and on that on this side where I never cross the horizontal asymptote at all. Okay. I don't do that. I just get, I get really close to it, but don't touch. We'll finish those notes tomorrow and it'll make a little bit more sense as we try it.